Hello folks and welcome again to another video from Gondog and Fly. Mila Falterov. And I was thinking, aren't we lucky as fly tires today? In comparison to when I started fly tying flies, which is more than well almost half a century ago. And the comparison, if you look for example here, this is just Unbelievable, really, when you think about it. Um, when I started tying flies, I was scrimping and scraping, trying to get a few things together. Um, hooks were almost impossible to find. Anything light in particular for dry flies. Um, there was no, virtually, there was no f suppliers as there is now of fly tying materials. Um, all the stuff I have here, all these different threads and wires and boxes of dubbing and I have a magnifying light here, I need that because the old papers aren't as good as they used to be. The variety of hooks I have, I think I have somewhere in the region of probably more than 100,000 hooks with so many different varieties of hooks because I tie a lot of flies. So many innovations in recent years. and. The amount of feathers and furs and deer hair, you name it. There's just so much stuff available now to fly tires. That's all taken for granted. And it's fantastic because there's so much room for experimentation and all that. And in this video, I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation. My, um, in my recent wet fly video, I. I got a fantastic response to the wet fly video because in some senses the the wet fly tradition is fading if you like it's it's disappearing I haven't seen anybody fish wet flies for quite a long time now I know there are stronger traditions of wet flies in different parts of this country here and in in parts of England I know there's still quite a strong tradition of fishing wet flies but what I've seen here locally is the wet flies the wet fly as, as a kind of a discipline is disappearing. I remember when virtually everybody fished wet flies, but nowadays wet flies are sort of a rarity. So um, everybody now seems to be Euronymphing, almost exclusively, and particularly newcomers to the sport. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I'm now going to use some of the we call it the recent innovations. I'm going to give you an example here. I'm trying to fly at the moment with this wire here. This is what I call bottle green in colour. I bought this in a craft shop. It's just green wire. Now, to get that wire, like that would have been, like that just simply wasn't available when I started time flies. It just wasn't available. Like, where would you get green wire 40, 50 years ago? You just wouldn't find it. It's that simple. Um, but now you can find it freely available. I, you, you, I've no doubt you'd buy it on the internet. You'd buy it from fly tying suppliers. I just happened to see it in a craft shop. And I thought, I'm going to use this to tie what I call a variant of my favourite wet fly, which is the dark green well. Now, the dark green well body. There's, I have a video if you want to check out the channel all about that particular fly and the body colour on that is bottle green and this here is bottle green wire so I'm going to make a or I'm going to tie a variant of the dark green well using this wire as the body as opposed to using a thread or a wool body as in the original fly so it'll be interesting to see how effective or not effective it is in comparison to the other fly, to the original if you like. And the only difference really I think it'll be, the body will obviously be quite a bit shinier and there'll be a little extra weight added to the fly which will sink it that, just that little bit more. So this is going to be the first of many experiments I'm going to do with um, wet fly patterns using wire and a few other things. But I thought it would be very interesting just to um, tie a few of these. I'm going to take them fishing 
and I hope you're going to uh, stay with me and hopefully see me catch some fish on I don't know what we we'll call it we we'll call it a, a dark green well variant for want of a better description uh, it'll be interesting so be sure to stay with me for this I'm here on the bank of the river and um, to carry out the little experiment I spoke about. Now, what I have here is my little nine foot rod again and uh, I have uh, just a straight length of five pound breaking strain nylon. And it's roughly uh, maybe 10 feet long. And onto the point, I have tied the new experimental fly if you like, the one with the wire body. And then, Approximately a yard away, I have my go-to fly, my um, dark green ones. Now, it's not a great morning for fishing. i a cold north wind blowing, which always mitigates against good fishing. And um, it's cold on the hands, it's stinging. So I don't suppose fish would be very active, but I'm gonna fish down this little stretch here, see would we get a trout or maybe even a couple of offers, I'd be happy. I'd like to see, um, what will happen if you like with these two flies competing. So here goes. You might also notice something else. I'm not wearing any waders because I have no intention of going in the river today. I'm just going to fish off the bank. I start off here nice and close. bit of a wind blowing downstream which um, won't help with the upstream casting but now you'll notice I'm casting the, the wet flies upstream here and uh, just allowing them to come down here in front of me and swing around lovely to be at the river anyway even if um, it's cold and not ideal for fishing. So now I'm just fishing the traditional down and across method. I think fish will be stuck to the bed of the river this morning, that cold weather. As regards the weather and fishing, um, northerly is not good. Easterly is the worst of all possibles. It's easterly just kills everything. There's an old saying around here. It says uh, the wind from the east is neither good for man nor beast, and that's true because when I see the weather coming from the east, I don't go fishing. I stay at home. It's an absolute waste of time. Ideally, you need the weather coming from the south, which warms everything up and gets everything moving. Southeasterly, southwesterly, or even directly from the south, it's coming up from the right part of the world and warming everything up. Westerly is not too bad. If you were to choose between east, north, and west, um, westerly would be the best of the three, but ideally we'd like the weather from the south, but 
unfortunately today it's from the north hence no fish in that stretch there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn the camera around and I'm going to fish a little bit further down here okay we live in hope Right, back to you shortly. Right, I'll just throw a few casts here and uh, you never know. No, I can't go down here very far because I've only got the wellies on. Uh, quite a few people, quite a few will know where I'm fishing here. This is the bridge at Golden in County Tipperary. Um, famous little spot on the shore for trout fishing. Golden, of course, um, is a bastardization, if you like, of the real Irish name of this place, which is Ungawaleen, which means the junction, the junction on the river. So no fish, but a little bit of a history lesson. So I'm gonna to move to um, another place just down the river here. Now, I'm going to fish this little stretch here. It's actually turned extremely cold now. Tips of my fingers are tingling and numb. So, certainly not a day for fishing. Yeah. The, the river here is um, probably a little bit too deep for wet fly, but I'll give it a go. Ah, another problem. Did I get it out successfully? Yes. Yeah, as I suspect, it's just a little bit too deep there for the wet flies on a floating line. Now you could resort to a sinking line or a sink tip line, but I'm not a big fan of sinking and sink tip lines because they require a lot of effort to use. You have to draw your line back all the way after every cast in order to recast because of 
it's just the nature of it. Whereas a floating line, irrespective of how much line you have out, you can just lift it off the water. You have to retrieve a sinking line or sink tip line right to your feet so you can recast. So there's a lot more effort involved. Now, you'd probably catch a few more fish. You'd be getting down that bit deeper, but, and sometimes I'll reluctantly resort to a sink tip, but prefer not. So if you want to fish water like this, that's that little bit deeper and you're prepared to go to the effort, well then a sink tip line or even a full sinker, you would probably catch a few more fish on it. Now, there are fish here I have no doubt, but they're going to be in the pockets, i.e. The, the quieter parts of the river. But between me and that pocket, for instance, I have this fast water. So now, to fish that little pocket, I have to try and either, ideally what you would do is you would weigh it out, but the current is really swift there, you could be taken away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and get my flies in there best I can and maybe get a, get a fish. The current here nearby will try to pull the flies away, so I'm holding it out of that current best I can. Now those flies are fishing perfectly in there now. Doesn't always work. Another pocket just out here. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> a lovely fish caught on the new experimental. There he is, not a big fish by any measure, but the challenge was to catch him in a place like this. So back he goes. There you go, folks. Uh, you can catch fish in almost impossible situations, if you like. Um, the fish will always gravitate in a place like this to where the current is easy on them, if you like. So you have the pockets and concentrate your efforts on the pockets oftentimes very difficult to get your flies to fish properly in the pockets but if you can get your flies in there you're likely to catch a fish now this is sort of flat water if you like um, it's about maybe four feet deep and then it gradually shallows to around two feet. So there should be some fish here. Yes. Took the original green was on the dropper. There he 
is. Ooh, he's got lovely fish. So let's see if we can find some more of his relatives. So that's it folks, that's wet fly fishing on a day that was less than ideal. Uh, cold north wind, high water for the most part, and uh, just very difficult conditions. But caught a few fish, not in the right home about as it happens, but still very enjoyable. It's great to be out on the river. As regards the new fly, well when I say it's a new fly, it's a new fly for me. Um, Trout seem to find it favourable. I'm quite sure on the right day I would catch a lot of fish on this fly. So it's a, I suppose the jury's still out whether it's a better fly or if it's the equal of the original dark green well, but both of them perform. And uh, I'm quite confident that the new one would be in good conditions, equally as good as the original dark green well. So that's it folks for today. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you did, you might consider subscribing. Have a look through uh, my channel. You'll see a lot of stuff that might interest you if you're into fly fishing or dog training, hunting, that sort of stuff, any of those outdoor pursuits. So once again, Goromina Mahgui, Asper Kholodur Arisht, Agus Gadi Ankedor Ele, Bigi Slain, Agus Bigi Egi Eskarak.